Well, he made his name shooting seemingly off the cuff acoustic sessions with artists including Arcade Fire, Tom Jones, many, many others, and young up and comers too. After a couple of falling outs with record labels, he turned to more in-depth filmmaking, concentrating on true passion projects, including filming indigenous music across the world. Vansal, you've had an incredibly interesting few years. Can you first tell us about how you came to filmmaking and to the point that bands like R.E.M. requested that you work with them? No, oh, it went pretty fast. I guess it was like 10 years ago I was a photographer and I started to get into uh, really deeply into music. I was living in Paris just going out every night actually to see a show and then I became became friend with, uh, with mostly with one band at the time which were not really famous was named uh, The National uh -huh. and um, and little by little we started to plan projects and I made a little music video for them and then a friend um, a guy that I didn't know at the time cried had a website a blogotech and he wanted to start a little um, little thing online mm -hmm. And he, he asked me, uh, oh, maybe we can do it together. Uh, he will produce and I will direct those little clips. And the idea from the, from the very beginning was to do something very intimate mm. with those bands, you know. It's much more casual, isn't it? It's, it's almost like they're doing a little show just for friends <coughs> kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, just to really to strip down to the bone um, this, this whole idea of what's, what's a recording of music, mm. you know. And I really wanted to record live music. Yeah. Because all the music videos... Yeah, through the 90s sort of like set up something very different which yeah. very very produced with lots of money and I was really trying to make something with that money almost involved you know mm. and really trying to just to bring bring it back to the make to the core to, to the to yeah. the really to the essence of mm. what is it to play music that so was sort I, of I around the same time that uh, lots of bands were getting onto MySpace and things and sort of mm. regaining control of their music yeah exactly it? Sort, sort of, of yeah, you know yeah, went along no, with that time Quantity, uh, no intermediaries, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, just like straight, you no know, directly with with the bands and in, in the streets often or in a home. And well, let's like show the viewers one of those really rather priceless moments that you have become known for. Uh, this is uh, from the Takeaway shows uh, before they really properly took off. It's the French rock band Phoenix playing at the Eiffel Tower, no less. <laughs> of these clips in about four years that's a lot of work very quickly um, just you what made you pull away from those and when you you working with REM and Arcade Fire mm -hmm. and then you suddenly changed and uh, decided to move away from the mainstream? I, I didn't suddenly change I was uh, actually I sort of like left Paris at the time I was I explored this this type movie of music and in terms of um, filming it and, and I wanted to I got my curiosity sort of like simply pushed me somewhere else and I started to, to live with a backpack. I left Paris and I, I went to travel around the world. It's a life a lot of people would envy, I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I've, I've been doing this for five years, sort of, and I just like handed up this sort of like five-year cycles of, of traveling. Mm. But the, the obvious thing is uh, every young boy's dream is to have uh, these bands play their own shows for you where in various places around, like, nice cities around the world. Mm. And you decide, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go traveling around and well, find out something new. Yeah, let's talk about your mm -hmm. newer projects, in fact. Um, we're going to show a little bit of a film that you filmed in Chechnya. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is from really a project nice. called The Grand Jihad. Take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there we go. This is from the Grand Jihad, and this is from your much more recent things to do with sort of a, mm -hmm. uh, much more ancient sort of music forms, indigenous music around the world. Now, uh, the title really sticks out in people's minds, I think, Grand Jihad, mm -hmm, the yeah, big yeah. jihad. No, what does that mean? Oh, well, basically, the meaning of jihad in, in the Quran, have, there's two different meanings, actually, the little and the great jihad. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to use this name, the great jihad, because just to put a light on the real meaning of jihad, on that meaning of the jihad mm. through the Quran, which is actually the fight against your inner self. Mm -hmm. The fight with your fight with your own ego, mm -hmm. while the little jihad, which is the one we are, we know nowadays, is sort of like the the, the war against the, the others, you know, the, the yeah. non-convert and so on. Yeah. So that's that's why I wanted just to put like this little um, you know, point on that. Um, but then, yeah, my my most recent work has been really digging into um, sacred music, 
is also it about from this what finding, ancient way of like being with music. Is it about finding music that you think is at risk of getting lost, or just because not that many well, people of, know of about course, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, there, it's not always getting lost. It really it's like a case by case situation. In that, in, it's sort of like from one valley to another. You know, I spent a lot of time, for example, in the Caucasus, mm -hmm. and with such a games coming, it's very there's interesting. There's so to many talk countries and, and so music. many different artists. It almost feels like it's an anthropological study. It's a study of yeah, but it's very. Um, at the time, it's, it's a very poetical study in a sense because I'm not at all an anthropologist. Uh, I don't have any background into such studies, into anthropology and so on. And I just go there by myself, just really alone with my backpack. And I just meet people in every, in every place is like but that. How, how, how do help. you pay for this is the obvious yeah. question. I just, I mean, I just live with little, li very little amount of money. Just I have my camera and my, my computer and I, I just go and so people I, have funny places. So you ask for donations on your website? Yeah. And I, I, all my work is on donations on my website. All my work is, is showed for, is for free on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I don't really uh, show it in film festivals or and anything. I don't show it on TV. And you're trying to get nice uh, crowdfunding for an album that, of the music that you recorded whilst you're in Russia. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. 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 I, I was in Russia and I was recording uh, mostly. I was making a project mostly on uh, ethnic minor minorities in Russia. I think for me, yeah, of course, it's not that all the ways those music are all getting lost. Mm. Just that I think it's very important to talk about them.